Hi, Miguel Kakanindan here, back with another Naruto vlog. Today we're doing volume 21, Pursuit. Um, and we start this volume off, excuse me while I fix my hoodie, we start this volume off uh, with Sasuke leaving Konohagakure uh, in pursuit of Itachi. Um, he has chosen to join the sound ninja that attacked him in, our, in the previous volume, um, and we'll get to them in a little bit. I have some stuff to say about them. Uh, Sakura attempts to stop him because she is fully aware of uh, his intent to go kill Itachi, um, to uh, leave Hon Konohagakure, uh, and of his dark of, of his dark motivations. And Sakura, like Sakura, while she has uh, come quite, uh, she, she's come quite a ways since we first met the lovesick girl in uh, Volume Two, I think it was, but. When, when we first met her, she had uh, she she was very much infatuated with Sasuke, and she's still infatuated with Sasuke. It's still a big part of her uh, her her motivations in this in, in in this manga and throughout the series. And Sasuke is fully aware of that. Um, but Sakura has grown to know that her infatuation with Sasuke is now more than just. Uh, you know, then it's more than sur it goes deeper. It's more than surface level. Uh, she loves Sasuke um, not just because she wants to be with him, but because she and Sasuke and Naruto even have all had have all gone on so many adventures together uh, uh, at this point. They've had so many experiences. They've uh, been through so much together. They've been through so much as a group um, under Kakashi's training. They they've been through so much at this point that. She feels that Sasuke shouldn't give that up. Um, it's it, it's a very big part of who they are now. Uh, they have been influenced so much by each other that to just give all that up for such a dark uh, for such a dark motivation would be would just be folly. And Sakura is like, if you must go, then let me go with you. Sasuke is not about to uh, allow that to happen. He actually says, like, thank you for uh, putting Sakura into, uh, for, before knocking her unconscious. Because I think Sasuke is beginning, despite uh, the fact that he really feels that he needs to go after Itachi, um, Sakura, um, as opposed to Naruto, who, whom he feels uh, bitter towards because uh, he is feeling inferior, inferior to Naruto, um, Sakura has always been there for him. Sakura was the person who uh, watched over him and protected him from Gara. Uh, Sakura was the person who first ran to his aid when uh, Sasuke was seemingly killed uh, by by uh, Zabuza and uh, Haku. So the so Sakura has always been there for him, despite everything. Um, and she even now she's still looking after him. She still wants the best for him. And it, this the the dynamic between Sakura and Sasuke has really shifted um, over the course of the manga, and I really see it uh, in in this particular volume, where um, when Sakura finally comes to and Sasuke is long gone, uh, she actually we actually see her come to Naruto, and we see a flashback as uh, back to when Sakura and Naruto first became a member became teammates, and Sakura was mistreating Naruto horribly. Uh, with, you know, with with decent reason. Um, Naruto was a bit of a creep, and he also was very immature, uh, had this big crush on Sakura that uh, didn't really, was really not uh, reciprocated. But we see also how Sakura and Naruto's relationship has changed. Naruto has much more respect for Sakura, um, but he also has an, uh, a lot of respect for uh, Sasuke. And Sakura is begging Naruto, please, uh, this is my one request, the one request, uh, the biggest request I'll ever make in my lifetime, bring Sasuke back. Bring Sasuke back to us. Um, and it, it really shows just how much these relationships have grown, how these characters have grown with each other, uh, because of each other. It's really interesting. Even Sasuke, um, for all the dark deeds that he uh, intends to do, for all of his, uh, for, for, for his motivation for revenge, through, even through all that, we really see how much his experiences with Sakura and Naruto have really changed him. Um, but he's trying to reject that, uh, which is uh, really a really interesting, uh, an interesting move by Sasuke. Um, so, uh, yeah, Sakura is like in a pit of despair because of Sasuke's actions and his decisions. Um, and I'm this is honestly the moment that we've all been waiting for. Honestly, this 
the volumes up to this point, the establishment of Sasuke's motives, the uh, growth that Sakura and Naruto have been through, um, it's all been building up to this point where Sasuke decides to do his thing, he decides to go down this dark path, um, and Sakura and Naruto are trying to pull him back from it. It's a really beautiful thing to finally start happening here. Um, so Sasuke starts going off with the sound ninja, uh, the four sound ninja who attacked him, and it turns out that Orochimaru commanded them, once Sasuke leaves Konohagakure, he is their new boss. Um, so they 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 want Sasuke to achieve the next levels of Orochimaru's curse, of uh, the mark of Orochimaru, which would uh, rapidly deteriorate his body, much faster than the uh, first state did. So... Um, what they needed to do was they needed to uh, basically condition his body to be better accustomed to it. Um, and in order to do that, they need to uh, make sure th they need to uh, temporarily kill him so that uh, and use jutsu to keep him alive, you know, put him in a state of unconsciousness long enough for his body to acclimate to Orochimaru's curse. Um, that might leave some side effects. I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm really, really worried for Sasuke in, at this point because I do remember his appearance uh, changing somewhat um, from some of the art in some other media that I've seen, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, Sasuke uh, does agree to it. Uh, he uh, ends up uh, temporarily dying. Uh, the Sound Ninja uh, put up this barrier around him. Um, now, regarding the Sound Ninja, uh, four. There are four of them, one for each uh, direction. Uh, Tayuya of the north gate, or something of the other, Kidomaru of the east gate, uh, Jirobo of the south gate, and uh, Sakon of the west gate. Despite the fact that there are four of them, um, and they they're really they really don't stand out to me. I actually had to write all their names down, um, and I don't know who's who. Uh, they're completely like to me. I did not catch on to their personalities. They're pretty boring, in my opinion. Um, that I I'm, I'm not too fond of them right now. We only see one of them uh, like really take action uh, in this volume, and like really notable action. And we um, and and I'm getting to that. We'll 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 get to that. So, um, some of the, uh, some of the ninja in, uh, Konohagakure, uh, hear Sakura's story, learn that Sasuke has, uh, left, and they go and report to, uh, the fifth Hokage, who is Tsunade. Tsunade is, like, swamped at this point. Um, she has so much work to do, and she's actually, uh, she's actually falling asleep in the middle of work because she's not used to all this, uh, all the Hokage responsibilities yet. But um, upon learning that uh, Sasuke has gone on his own way, she uh, she summons Shikamaru, the one uh, the the one person who passed the Chunin exams, and told him to and she tells him to form a team uh, of Genin, of as many Genin as he needs to go after Sasuke and bring him back to Konohagakure. Um, the reason she uh, t tells him to bring Genin along with. Uh, with him is because all the Jonin and all the Chunin are on missions because uh, the battle with Orochimaru wiped out like a lot of a village. So the despite Konohagakure remaining the strongest uh, the strongest ninja village in the world, uh, which means that they get all the requests, which means that everyone in Konohagakure village is busy except for the Genin. So. Shikamaru has to take the gain, the Genin with him in order to uh, in, in in order to have enough people to bring Sasuke back. And of course, they expect resistance. They expect uh, a lot of enemies, uh, pro possibly enemy ninja, maybe even the Akatsuki. We don't know. Like all all these po all these dangers, and we have to rely on these Genin because all the Jonin and Chunin are busy. Um, Kakashi's busy. Even Iruka at one point mentions like, "Hey Naruto, you have to go on missions." Uh, because you really have to do your part to help our village. We are, we're, we're basically under, uh, we don't have enough employees right now. <laughs> we're, we're, we're basically understaffed. Even I'm going on missions. Um, we haven't actually seen Iruka go on a mission before. He's always at the academy teaching of the students, but because he actually has to go on missions too. Uh, we, we, he, we know that, um, you know, we're severely understaffed at that point. So uh, Shikamaru, uh, by Tsunade's request, Shikamaru actually has to bring Naruto along. 
So uh, we we don't know. I, I think we know what Tsunade's motivations are here. She really wants Naruto to grow, to learn what it means to be Hokage, to gain the experience needed to understand what the Chunin and Jonin responsibilities are. Um, in order, to, because he needs that, he needs that knowledge in order to become Hokage. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's her motivation there. Um, but Shikamaru also chooses Kiba uh, and Akamaru, who would no doubt have uh, a pivotal role in tracking down Sasuke and, uh, you know, identifying the strengths of any enemies that may be, may be in wait. He chooses Choji, and we'll get to him in a second. Um, and he also chooses Neji, because he knows that his Byakugan will also be very helpful in scouting out enemy traps. So, this five-man team of Shikamaru, Naruto, Kiba, Neji, and Choji all go out, all set out to go uh, find Sasuke. Um, and here's where Shikamaru's uh, the strategic value uh, really shines. Uh, despite the fact that he was forced to have Naruto on his team, despite the fact that he was forced to have Gainin exclusively on his team, uh, he is able to work with it and come up with a strategy, uh, regard keeping in mind the various, uh, you know, the various obstacles to making his team uh, the best that it can be, despite the uh, the restrictions that he has placed on his team, the constraints that he has to work with, he is still capable of coming up with a very good plan uh, to make sure that any enemy ambushes would not uh, would not affect them. Would they be able to overcome them? Um, he, place it, he places uh, Kiba and Akamaru at the front to uh, help scout out Sasuke and to scout out any potential enemies uh, that are traveling along with him or that might be in front of them. He, as uh, the squadron leader, is placed in second. Naruto is placed in the third so that he can support either the front or the back uh, because he is uh, most, a a most easily able to do that with his shadow clones. Uh, he places Choji uh, at the back to deliver the final blow should uh, a fight ever come to happen, and Neji takes up the rear, uh, scanning the scanning the back of the group at, at, for enemy enemies that might be in pursuit with this Byakugan. Um, we don't get to see if how much Neji uh, has grown. We see him. Uh, we, we only see him speak strictly about the mission to his uh, fellow ninja, which I like. I like the fact that he's not uh, he's not dwelling on previous uh, previous encounters with Naruto or Kiba or any of these other ninja that he's uh, worked with or fought against in the past. I like the fact that he's strictly business in this in this one. So um, they do come across the sound ninja eventually. Um, the sound ninja at this point have uh, actually it took their second state to fend off the Jonin who were trying to uh, who, who were trying to get Sasuke back. Um, and Shizune actually has to heal two of her uh, two of her four uh, the the four Jonin in that squadron. So it's really that really g gives you an idea of how powerful these four sound ninja are. Uh, and our five man group is about to uh, come face to face with them. Uh, so. When we do come face to face with them, uh, most of the work comes from uh, Jirobo, um, who is uh, the basically the muscle of the four uh, of the four sound ninja. Uh, we don't really see the other three do much. Uh, we do see they do set a trap uh, in order to make sure that Sasuke uh, awakens as in the second state to acclim acclimate his body to the second state of Orochimaru's mark. Uh, they have to stay in one place, which means they have to set up a perimeter uh, of traps. So um, th this is problematic. This is why the group dynamic of Naruto and Shikamaru uh, is very interesting, because Naruto is one punch first, ask questions later, right? Um, he, he relies on his instincts all the time rather than a plan. Shikamaru relies very heavily on his preconceived strategy. So whenever Naruto steps out of line, it puts the entire group in danger. It puts into... Shikamaru's entire plan in danger, um, and, and we see that we see that dynamic happen a lot throughout the course of the volume. Um, whenever Shikamaru spots a trap, Naruto actually accidentally springs it before he can tell everyone that there is a trap. Um, we see Jirobo um, actually trap the entire group in like this uh, rock dome um, that saps their chakra from them, so that they're not able to use jutsu uh, as easily. Um, and even uh, Kiba and Akamaru uh, are not able to burst through the rock. Um, but Shikamaru notices that some of the chakra uh, that the rock siphons, uh, it's more 
condensed into one place than it is in others. So, by he actually strikes up a conversation with Jirobo in order to identify where he is and where the chakra would be most condensed uh, and where the chakra would be uh, would be more, uh, you know, not as uh, packed together so that he can more easily burst through the rock. Um, while he's doing this, Naruto gets angry. He thinks that Shikamaru is just giving up at this point, and he, he almost completely ruins the plan, which, you know, everyone else had to, like, uh, say, like, Naruto, shut up! We're trying to get out here! Uh, there is a plan, and you are not sticking to it! So Naruto almost completely ruins it for uh, for them. Um, but with the help of Choji and his um, expansion technique, he, they actually manage to escape the dome, um, and Shikamaru and uh, Neji, Naruto, and Kiba all go after Sasuke and the other sound ninja, while Choji takes on Jirobo. Um, and here is, um, we, we learn a lot about Choji here. Choji gets, we, we learn more about Choji's backstory and the, why he's so sensitive, why he is so, uh, sensitive about his size. Uh, not only is he very annoyed when people call him Fatso, um, his whole life he has been shunned because, uh, the Akamichi clan uh, apparently is, uh, it, it's not a popular clan, so Choji is, you know, very much, uh, shunned as a kid, um, but Shikamaru was the one person who actually enjoyed his company, um, and he, uh, Choji considers him his best friend, so whenever, uh, whenever Jirobo actually calls him, you're nothing but a pawn in their games, you're nothing but the, but the person who is least likely to succeed in, in that group of people, even Naruto, like, when, when, when Naruto's in that group, uh, that is considered a very big insult. Choji not only takes offense to that, but Jirobo actually insults Shikamaru too, and Cho Choji actually is like, that's unforgivable. So, it turns out, we learn a, a little more about Choji's powers too, so we learn, we already knew that his expansion technique requires him to eat a lot, right? So, uh, he actually has three special pills that are the, uh, the, basically the, uh, signature, uh, move of the Akamichi clan, uh, of his clan. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Akamichi? I don't know. But, uh, he swallows, he, he only takes these pills, uh, in, like, really, really dire situations. So, some of these pills, one, one of these pills, like, makes him grow even larger than before. Um, it gives him super, uh, a bunch of strength. But there is one pill, the red pill, that uh, Shikamaru, we see Shikamaru, like, worried, like, do not even think about touching that red pill. Um, you will, and we know that that red pill is probably going to kill Choji um, if he actually swallows it. Um, and I think he does in actually end up swallowing it. Uh, in order to counter Jirobo's second state, which is this, like, really monstrous transformation. Um, so I'm curious to see, uh, I'm curious to see how Choji deals, how, how Choji's red pill impacts him. If he survives it, I really hope he survives it after this volume. I like Choji. I really like Choji. Uh, and, um, I'm curious to see also how Sasuke's mark is going to affect him. We know that the second state, uh, from the Jirobo's transformation, we know that the second state is very monstrous, um, and it amplifies one's power to an absurd degree. So, yeah, uh, I'm very curious to see where this goes from here, and I'm very, very excited to see the, uh, to see Naruto, uh, meet up with Sasuke again, and maybe try to convince him. I'm very curious to see how Sasuke is going to interact with Orochimaru. There's so much going on, and I don't know which to focus on, because it's all really, really good. Um, how is Sasuke going to uh, face Itachi? Will he face Itachi? Um, how will Naruto face Sasuke after the bond that they shared has been broken uh, like this? How is Naruto going to... Uh, is, is he going to imp implement Sakura in his argument? You hurt Sakura in making this decision, and for that, I cannot forgive you. All of these things, like, coming together to make this really, really, really tense, uh, this really tense cliffhanger at the end of this volume. And I'm really, really excited to move on to the next volume. Uh, so, yeah. By the way, that's the last we'll see of this book. And we shall be moving on to this book.
which has volume 22 in it. Before I go, I just wanted to say thank you for watching, and if you are if you like the things that I do, I'll be sure to check out my other ongoing series, Orange. Uh, it's about a young girl named Naho who gets a letter from her future self, uh, 10 years in the future, to try and save the person that she loves from committing suicide. Definitely check it out. It's a very, uh, very emotional story. It's not as action-packed as Naruto, which is why I wanted to do it alongside uh, the shonen manga over here. Um, definitely check it out. It's it's worth it's it's worth the watch. And if you haven't already, check out my Pokemon Adventures Revisit series, um, where in which I revisit Pokemon Adventures, which is a manga that I read as a child and I wanted to see how well it holds up now that I'm an adult. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. That that goes up every Saturday. Uh, and yeah, I will see you next time.